Hello and welcome to the Biology Career Insights, the podcast where we talk with experts from the field of biology to gain valuable insights into the careers and explore ways to navigate the job market in this ever-evolving field. I'm your host, Dr. Manish Kumar. Today, we are joined by Dr. Elizabeth Wall, a product manager focusing on workflow automation for cell and gene therapies at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Elizabeth has over 10 years of experience in cell culture and molecular biology and has supported scientists in their R&D through editing, scientific writing, and consultative support. She also has an extensive educational background, including an MBA from the University of Illinois and a doctorate from Technical University of Munich in Germany in the field of experimental medicine with a focus on regenerative medicine and tissue engineering. Elizabeth, thank you for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and your current role at Thermo Fisher Scientific? Yeah, sure. So um, I've dabbled in a lot of different areas until I found my true niche. Um, and so now I'm at Thermo Fisher as a product manager focused on um, automation and workflows. So I have a really strong connection or desire to work in cell and gene therapy um, personally and just there's so much going on and it's such a rapidly growing field that it's a very exciting place to be. And so uh, in addition, automation is another thing that's just, you, you can see all about AI, chat GPT, it's everywhere right now. And we're always looking for better ways to automate things, to make them easier. And uh, especially in something like cell and gene therapy, where you have historically a lot of manual hands on um, processes that can introduce a lot of um, things you don't want to be there, like bacteria or just human error. So what I am really working on is like, how can we get the best uh, care for these patients that are dealing with um, treatments that are decades old and more detrimental in some cases than anything? Awesome. Uh, so we'll we'll dive in with your you know with your journey to science. So for our audience, can you tell what inspired you to pursue a career in science and how did you get started in your field? Yeah, absolutely. I actually started uh, focusing on art and it was something that I really loved, I was good at. And I found more and more as I went down that journey that the things that were most interesting for me were also related to biology. So life science drawing, um, human figure drawing, things like this. And then I started to take classes that were more in the science side, just because that's how it works in the US education system, you have to balance out. And I realized I enjoy this a lot more than I enjoy at least studying art. I thought I can still do my art, that's no problem, but I don't need to um, continue down on the educational side of it. So I keep that as my, my side project and what I like to do for fun. But the more that I learned, in science and the more classes that I took, the more I realized like, this is really what I wanna be. And I had uh, a lot of that burning question of why is something a certain way? And so um, this is really what got me into the lab also. Like I wanna look at why this is happening and how can we figure out um, the downstream effects of that? So uh, I think it was just really trying a lot of different things and mm -hmm. figuring out like, this is really where my passion lies and this is really what I want to do. And then I think like a lot of us, we have family members that are sick or friends that are sick. And so that why turned into like, okay, why is this happening? And what could I do for my part to help that uh, get better? Awesome. And science so it was, was basically driven by curiosity. And first of all, you kind of tried to figure out with, you know, with dabbling into different fields and then you realize this is your passion, which makes exactly. total sense. Yeah. Um, and you have an extensive uh, educational background, Elizabeth, you know, perhaps you can elaborate, you know, what led to another and why you pursued what you pursued. Yeah, I, I guess part of me thought I had to do that. And part of me thought I really enjoy studying. I really enjoy learning. I consider myself a lifelong learner because I still today I see a, a podcast or a little class and I'm like, hmm, what is this? I just want to kind of know more. Um, and 
So I, I went down the science path quite a bit. And as I entered my doctorate, we had, I went to a talk and they were talking about how the divide between academia and business, it's, it's getting smaller. So like a lot of uh, professors were creating startups and that gap just kind of started to close. And so as I entered my first job in or an industry, sorry, I also started to get questions like, um, can you create a business case for this? And coming out of the, the lab, I thought, huh, what is the business case? I don't know what you're asking me. I don't know what to do. So I started looking up like, what's the best way to present this? And um, that kind of, and also talking to other uh, PhD scientists that I had known who had gone down that path of more like business learning and getting an MBA, that's what led me also to get an MBA and extend that education even further. Now, I do get a lot of questions like, why do you want to go back at this point? You know, you've done so much, but at the same time, it's just having gone down that path and it is it is more time that you spent and more money that you spend but the value that i've gained from it and the connections that i've made and i've seen so many other people that are just like i've wanted to do this i've wanted to learn this and it doesn't matter their age they'll go back at 50 60 and you can still get a lot out of it absolutely so i i kind of you know i also thought about doing that you know especially immediately after my PhD, because, you know, while, while you try to transition uh, right after your PhD, you are kind of confused on to which area of business you should enter because you don't have that clarity because you have no, never worked for industry before. Right? right. So I think there to develop connections, to develop the network and also to develop the right mindset, I think, you know, uh, your business degree helps you a lot. Right. So I think, I mean, great. It's just about, you know, the perseverance, and, you know, the the time you took to kind of, you know, uh, get all these degrees. So congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. Could you describe your current role as a product manager and what your, what are your like primary responsibilities? What is a day of a product manager like, you know? Yeah, that's, that's the million dollar question because the day of a product manager is almost never the same the next day. It's, it's really a journey that you take with a whole team. And it's basically being a mini CEO. So you are in charge of your product. And I think I would encourage you, if, if somebody's interested in product management, to talk to multiple product managers, because you'll talk to me, you'll hear one story, you'll talk to another product manager, you'll hear another completely different story. Um, so when it comes to the education, I've found really that having that science background, that technical understanding, and having that business understanding really has helped because Absolutely. you have to speak a lot of different languages to a lot of different people. It's all English, but I'm talking to engineers. I'm talking to um, people that don't understand the technology at all. Uh, on the business side, I'm talking to the customer. So, you, so that's one of the things like every day I'm talking to different people and I need to translate within the team what a certain need is from the customer or internally, like how can we make that a reality? And sometimes it's just a lot of, of planning and, and prioritization, like making sure that we have the right priorities because things, things can turn very quickly in um, product management. You might have a plan like this is our roadmap and this is how we're gonna do it, but things can go wrong. Um, and so you always have to like be able to pivot as well. And it can be that uh, at some point you realize you have to move fast too, because you could realize that you may want to slow down, but maybe there's other competitors out there that are also creating something very similar. So you want to have that speed to market as well. So really every day is a lot of meetings and conversations and making sure that everybody has what they need, that we're on the right track. And um talking to a lot of customers, like, what do you need? Translating that into not only what they need, but what the market needs as a whole. So there's a lot of communication, but what's really important in product management more than talking is listening and asking those why questions. Why, why, why? Why do you want to do this? Why is this important to you? And being really open-ended as well. So um, some days I'm sitting there planning out finances or planning out what we're going to do down the road or, or working with marketing to say, this is how we want to present our product. Um, and some days I'm in 
endless meetings. Sometimes I'm in, in trainings, a lot of trainings to make sure that everybody that's involved understands what we're doing and, and that why, 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 why are we doing it? And then a lot of listening. Absolutely. And I think, you know, as you rightly said, I think, you know, product management position comes in all shapes and sizes, depending on the company, depending on the role and, you know, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's challenging no matter, no matter what role you have. And in which company, I think it's the interesting part is that it's challenging, plus it's not boring. And you get to interact with so many departments, you know, you you wear so many hats, you interact with, say, marketing, you interact with sales, you interact with, you know, the upper management, you interact with R&D. So it never gets boring. So that's, that's really good to hear. And for, you know, so our audience basically are PhD students or postdocs who are looking for transitioning, you know, even, even say bachelor's or master's students. Um, who are looking in future to kind of, you know, transition into industry or like make the careers basically, right? Uh, so if you can tell, you know, how does your work as a product manager basically impact the scientific community and the broader public, you know, how does it relate to the broader public? If you can emphasize on that a bit. Yeah, absolutely. So product management in general is just figuring out where the needs are and then creating a product based on that so you're helping basically by listening to the needs and saying okay you need this how can we get you from that point of a need to the point of this is what i have in hand and this is what i need so product management you're constantly trying to make things better and you're trying to make a better product you're trying to get something out that is helpful and is addressing those needs those unmet needs Absolutely. Because if you're if you're just creating something that everybody already has, it's like, yeah, you, you can do that. That's that's also some product manager's role, just like kind of making sure that they have that baseline because you also need that baseline. But then there's the other side where it's like we, we're here and we want to go there and product management can help you get there. Amazing. And, you know, just as a follow up question. So what are some of the key skills and qualities, say, that are required to be a successful product manager and how? how can biology students develop these skills, you know, because you have gone through this journey, perhaps, you know, you can highlight that. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you really need to, you don't need to have um, all the technical know-how from the beginning, but you need to be curious. You need to have some of that baseline and you need to have uh, that want to learn, I think. So you need those communication skills where it's, again, it's not talking so much as listening. You're not selling anything. You're trying to understand from different people. Um, and listening is just so important for product so management. Important. I would say that is like one of the really key things. And being able to pull out what's important, so to prioritize. Um, and then the biggest thing is just you'll have people of – all different backgrounds that you're working with. So you need to have a lot of empathy and understanding. Absolutely. So, yeah, because you're gonna have to be able to, maybe somebody is in finance and they're not understanding why you need this and why it's important. So you have to be able to describe that. Mm -hmm. And then maybe somebody in R&D, they wanna focus on X, Y, Z, and you're like, well, that's not our priority. So you need to guide them. So really kind of having these soft people skills is something that's really important. You can always learn the technical side of things. I've worked in a couple of different um, companies and in different areas. And in the role I'm in now, like I really didn't have, I knew like the, I'm working in a software and I didn't have a software background, but I had that market background of cell and gene therapy. So I knew what that market wanted, but I had a bit of a learning curve where I had to learn about some of our different hardware and some of our different software and what that need is. So being curious and asking those questions of those experts that know that stuff and, and willingness to learn is, is really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what, if you, if you have to describe, say some of the biggest challenges you face in your role as a product manager, how would you, and you know, what would you, describe as these challenges and how do you overcome them you know so for me the biggest challenge really has been if we lose a team member or somebody transitions away and we need to bring up to speed uh somebody else 
because in your team, you have a really tight team and you work really closely together. And whenever a person leaves, you have a gap there and everybody plays a really important role. And so the hardest thing has been if, if you train somebody, if somebody's really we're rolling, we're going forward, we're going to meet these goals. And then somebody um, has to go out or they want to go out. And this is hard because you're talking to people in all different departments. And so when those transitions happen, it can slow things way down where you need to like get them up to speed and explain again, why, why should I care? Because in product management, you're not really responsible for all these people. You're not their supervisor. So you, you need to get them to, to work with you and to care about what you're doing because it's not their main priority. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So this is hard. And I think you mentioned, you know, the empathy part of it. And you also mentioned soft skills, you know, the people skills. And I think, you know, diplomacy is, again, another key because, you know, you 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 don't practice that authority over the people directly, right, as a product manager. And as you rightly said, uh, you know, people can have different priorities. So I think, you know, to convince them that, you know, your work is so important also in their, you know, um, say context is so, so important. So, I mean, I totally get that, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Uh, could you uh, also highlight, you know, how do you get, uh, so how do you keep updated in terms of, you know, all the recent developments in your field, especially, you know, what are the tools, techniques evolving in the product management area and also like in your specialized area of say cell gene therapy and automation and stuff. And what are the some resources that, you know, you would say kind of also recommend to others who are looking forward to a career in product management? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I do, and I don't know if this is an option so much for at the student level, but I go to a lot of conferences and I listen to talks. Um, you can read some of the newest papers that come out. Um, there's a lot of news. If you're interested in cell and gene therapy, it's a very hot topic right now. So you can see that in the general media, but there are some other resources you can go to like Biospace or um, Aspen Alert has a just a little blurb they send out every every day. And it's just a short read that's kind of like, this is what's going on. Um, other than that, we look at what our competitors are doing. And, and one interesting thing, and, and I, don't, I don't do this so much anymore, but I used to look at the job adverts that companies have, because if you're interested in what companies are doing, you can look for what roles that they're hiring for. And then you can Absolutely. realize, oh, they're working in, in this type or that type of area or... Um, and then really another important thing is like looking at the economy and how it's going, like what's going on in the, in the greater world, because that kind of impacts what, uh, what you're going to be able to do. I mean, you heard not that long ago about a lot of tech layoffs because that, that kind of changed. And, and there's also some issues within like the biotech world as well. So keeping ahead of like what's going on overall on the economic side is also really helpful. Um, and then what was the second part of your question here? So, I mean, for, I keep up to date. yeah, you, yeah. How do you keep yourself up to date? You, you said like uh, with the conferences and, you know, keeping a track of all the latest developments um, for the students, do you recommend any resources? Like if they want to transition into product management, because I mean, you transition, so, you know, you know, these resources as well. So if you can recommend something. Yeah, absolutely. So there is one, there's a wealth of resources out there of, of uh, for product management in general. I know McKinsey has a series that you can join and it has every week a different speaker within different areas of product management. And I found this to be really great because like even if you're starting out or you're advanced, because no matter the industry, no matter really what they're focused on, there were overarching themes that this is what product management is like. So even if you're talking to somebody in, in tech, if you're talking to somebody in the healthcare industry, there are these overarching themes. So McKinsey has a really great, great um, series about that, McKinsey mm -hmm. Product Academy. That's one if you really wanna know like what's going on. Um, other than that, really just kind of looking at some like what product management is, you'll get like an overview. And, and I, as I was preparing for this, because it's not really an easy question to answer, what is product management? I went down a rabbit hole myself, even though I work, <laughs> it is every single day and I have for the last years, it's just, you can get confused. So you can look it up 
but connecting with people that are in that role, this is really great. Reach out. There's a lot of people that want to help, you know, Absolutely. so Absolutely. just pick their brain, find your, what your questions are, what's important to you and, and set up a conversation with somebody. And no, do that's multiple a great people. advice. I think I remember, you know, I mean, absolutely, Elizabeth. I remember, I remember while I was trying to transition, I was trying to initiate conversation with so many people. So most of them are helpful. They might be busy, so they they cannot revert. So you know, don't take it as a personal thing. Just reach out. I mean, this is what I would also say strongly. You know, relate to. You know, uh, the the interaction is very important because then you can come up to. Uh, so many, so many, you, you will gain so many insights. And that's the aim of this podcast that, you know, whatever, you know, in our community, whatever we are learning, you know, as professionals, uh, the aim is to give back so that, you know, um, even if you kind of don't reach out to us actively, perhaps you can have some information, you know, yourself and, uh, you know, make, make use of it. So that's. Yeah. Especially if there's a particular field or particular company, like reach out to the people in that company and they'll be able to tell you not only what product management is, but what product management is in this company and tell you a little bit about the culture as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that brings me to another question. So what are the some of the most exciting, say, developments in your field right now? Because for me, you know, this gene and uh, gene therapy and stuff sounds so exciting. You know, there's so much happening in the field. So perhaps if you can highlight yeah, I mean, some of the main things that we're working on now is taking what's already there and, and making it, it better. So right now, CAR T cell therapy has been shown to be effective and patients have been treated 10 years ago and they're still living very happy, healthy lives. Um, it's not the end all be all. So there's still other things that are being looked at, but we're also focusing on on rare diseases more and listening to what the patients are saying, because the doctors can have an idea, the scientists can have an idea, but is that really what the patient wants? So there's a lot of focus on patients now and what they need and what they want, and um, as well as making things more sustainable. So there's been a lot of waste. There's a huge amount of waste in the industry. And so we're trying to make better products that are still effective, but eliminate that, that waste. And another thing, and, and this is what I'm really most excited about because this is where I'm working is automating some of these processes to create these therapies for the patients. Because it's, if you have um, cells that you get from a patient that's sick and you want to alter them. Now, if anything would happen to those cells, contamination, mishandling, anything like that, then that could cost a life. So one of the things we're working at now is like, how can we automate this process to make it more hands off? So it's a really closed system and those patient cells are safe. They get uh, altered the way they need to be altered and back into that patient to make a, a really great treatment. Um, alternatively, so one of the things we're also working on is taking patient, taking um, cells from healthy patients so they can be treated to be uh so they can be treated to then treat the sick patients as well. So this is something that we're not quite there yet, but if we could take the cells from another healthy donor, then this would be huge and it wouldn't be such a big worry of like, oh no, these sick patient cells, maybe they don't have a lot of healthy cells, you know? There's less risk there and um, a greater, we'll have a greater reach outside of, uh, just the small areas that are being treated right now. Great. And Elizabeth, I had one question also because, you know, I received this from so many, especially STEM uh, women in science, you know? So, I mean, you are obviously quite excited about career and, you know, you have progressed nicely and I know that you have kids and stuff, but, you know, I was the other day, I, I somebody was asking me, you know, that the career of a women in STEM, for example, also, kind of, uh, you know, coincides so much with the, you know, with the biological cycle. So on one hand, you, you need to have kids and then that's also the peak of your career. So how to strike a balance, especially as a woman, because I think women have, you know, that uh, 
they have that extra extra thing to do you know comparatively so what advice would you give to you know so women in stem yeah so great question i would say don't wait don't if you want to have kids have kids because there is no right time but there is a time where it's too late yes. and so i've i've known some people like oh i'm waiting till i'm done with my doctor i'm waiting till i'm done with my postdoc i'm waiting till i'm done that 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 and then it just doesn't happen don't let anybody tell you it's not the right time the right time is when it is the right yeah. time for you so and i mean i had my first child during my phd studies and I know. Just... I mean, that that <laughs> kind of that brought me to this question because you have managed both the things quite well, I must say. Yeah. And I mean, it, it helps to have a good support system, but it's that's not always possible. So it's sometimes like I I, I know when, when I was pregnant and we were trying to get pregnant, but I, I told uh, my husband, like, we like we need to do this together. Like, it's not going to be just me. Like, it has to be a code we have to be a team on this and he was on board so that's one thing i recommend that you have somebody there that can support you whether it's another family member whether it's a friend because anybody it doesn't matter even if you decide not to work anymore you need that support it's just... absolutely 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 but um on that note too this was something that changed the way i knew i didn't want to be in the lab anymore when i had kids because for me it was it was really long hours um, I loved it, but I still wanted to stay in science. And so I've always worked really hard to find a role where I can be remote so I can be there when my kids get off the bus. You know, like if they're sick, I have actually two kids uh, home sick today and I can actually be here because I have a remote role, you know. And, and so this is it's not something that has to be, but this shaped the way that I decided to take my career afterwards. Amazing. And, you know, finally, the great question. So what advice would you give to the biology students, say, who are considering a career in product management? And what are the some of the most important things that they should keep in mind as they pursue this path? You know? Yeah. Um, so product management can be very rewarding, but it is it can be difficult. Because you're, it's very. They're asking. You're being asked a lot to do a lot, and you don't have this authority that's given to you with your title. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, but it's, if you really like to take something, an idea, and make it a reality, then go for it. And I love it. I love it. It's to me, it's like being the CEO without having the risk, because you are a CEO of your product. <laughs> Um, but I would say just keep going, stay curious and really connect with people that are doing it. Uh, and, you know, a lot of these industries, they're small. So every time I go to a conference now, like the cell and gene therapy industry, I, like, I see the same people again and again. And so making those connections early on will be huge for you. And just, you know, there are some companies as well that do rotations where you can join and you can stay in a role for like three months, see if you like it, go to another role, do that three months and look into those. If you're not sure, mm -hmm. try it out. And any, you know, during PhD, do you kind of recommend the students to kind of emphasize on some skills or, you know, any special things that they can, they can focus on to kind of, you know, one thing you clearly said is communication, right? This is, uh, but any other skills that they can kind of, you know, really uh, practice and improve upon? Um, yeah, I guess just being really clear and intentional, like uh, communication really kind of is, is the bottom line. But if you're asking those questions, you're curious why. If you're doing a PhD, you're probably curious. You're probably already asking those why questions. Yes. But you could have the best research, but if you can't communicate it, then it's not worth that much. So that's the same thing. Like as you're working, as you're writing your thesis, as you're writing your papers, um, just make sure like everything's really clear. And a lot of times when we write for journals, we're writing for a very specific audience. So maybe even um, practice talking to your family members or talking to people outside of what you do and see if you can communicate or tell your story that 
in a way that everybody understands. Because this is something really important in product management that you can talk to all different people and communicate what you need and understand what they need. Great. So Elizabeth, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank and you, yeah. And to the audience, thank you for tuning to Biology Career Insights. Don't forget to subscribe our channel to, to be updated with the latest episode. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.